Hey, it's Becky. Today I'm making a custom replacement circuit board for a PS4 controller. I started out with a few broken controllers thinking what great interface devices they are and what a shame it was that because they're bricked, they're basically trash. I had the thought that if I opened it up and connected to all the switches that I could repurpose the controller for something else. So keep watching to see me design and manufacture a printed circuit board that does just that, then put it to use for a prototype music controller. This video is in partnership with Autodesk. Inside the controller, there's a circuit board that hosts the joysticks, a few switches, and the brains of the operation, but most of the buttons are wired up through this membrane keypad. The connector on the circuit board is this rectangular cutout with small pads that line up with the membrane's contacts. So this is what makes a custom PCB necessary for this project. There just isn't another way to connect all those membrane keypad switches. So I got to scheming a breakout board, a circuit that would have the required membrane interface, but then wire it to headers I could wire out to the rest of my circuit. I started by drawing a circuit diagram with the joysticks and the 19 membrane contacts, each connected to its own header pin. I designed the circuit board using one of this video's sponsors, Autodesk Fusion 360. It's a cloud-based CAD CAM software platform for product design and manufacturing. The electronics design space used to be a separate program called Eagle, and now that it's part of Fusion 360, it's easier than ever to engineer the precise fit that's required for this reverse engineering project. I was able to pull in the shape of the board as a DXF, which I had traced from a scan of the original controller's board, and easily translate it to a PCB outline. I created a custom device for the membrane keypad connection area, and also customized the footprint of the joysticks, using dimensions derived from the same scan as the board outline. Getting everything in the exact right spots to match up with the existing enclosure was probably the hardest part of this project. The routing for something like this is pretty easy because it doesn't matter which pads connect to which breakout pins, so long as they're each connected to their own. To make sure my board was manufacturable and was as likely as possible to work on the first run, I called on my ECAD Yoda, David Craner, to double check my work. Together we went through the DRC, making sure the board I designed met the criteria for my board manufacturer. Click my link in the description below to sign up for your free trial of Fusion 360. Since the board also exists in 3D, it was easy to 3D print a version to test if it would fit in the controller and if the holes fit my joysticks. This gave me some peace of mind that the boards I was planning to order would in fact fit, but I couldn't really be sure if the membrane contact area would work until the boards came in the mail. The original circuit board has some conductive material on each membrane pad, so I applied solder blobs to help the pads stick up a little from the surface of the board. I also attached the joysticks and header pins. I cut out an area at the back of the controller to allow the wires connected to the headers to protrude straight out and connected everything to a solderless breadboard so I could figure out which pin does what. I used some five volt power and an LED to accomplish this. The LED was wired from power and there were a couple pins from the joystick that I knew should be ground. So I'd plug the LED into the unknown pin, then press all the buttons on the controller to see if one lit up the LED. I was super excited when this actually worked. This process combined with some multimeter probing of the original circuit board helped me reverse engineer the button to membrane wiring and create meaningful labels for the membrane pads on my circuit board. Now that I had figured out the pin mapping, I could wire them up to a microcontroller to actually do something. So I left my investigative circuit alone and started on another controller. Instead of headers, I soldered wires directly to the board, which meant they could protrude out the existing front opening on the controller instead of having to cut into it. 
This video is also sponsored by DigiKey, where you can get all the parts and tools you need to make your own custom electronics, including affordable custom board fabrication with the DK Red service. Learn more at the link in the description. I wish I could have, but I didn't use DK Red for this project because it doesn't currently support interior routing, and I needed a couple oblong registration slots. Next time. So here's where I tell you where this project is going. I'm collaborating with Lightfoot Beats and House of Content to make a music controller. His style lends itself to this sort of noise toy, sample playground type of vibe, so I knew this was the perfect project to work on together. I have been playing around with an audio mixer program on an RP2040 board based on John Park's Breakbeat Breadboard project, written in CircuitPython. I modified it to mute and unmute the loop tracks and layer one-off sounds separately. I loaded up Lightfoot's audio packs and this working prototype was born. It was pretty complicated to get to this point, so I'm going to save the next iterations for a future video. I have plans to add the three mechanical switches I omitted from the first board and get all the components to fit inside the controller. That version won't be ready for a little bit, but I do have a revised PS4 controller breakout board PCB available in my shop in case you have a broken controller you'd like to turn into something new. And of course, you can find all the files and details for this open source design at the write-up for this project. I'll put the link in the description. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up and share it with a friend. I hope you'll subscribe with the bell to be notified of my future uploads, subscribe to my email newsletter, and find me on Instagram and Twitter. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. This video was made with support from my sponsors and with generous donations from viewers like you through Patreon and YouTube memberships. Hey, it's Becky. Today I'm making, oh, I need my PS4 controller. Oh, oh, here it is. Oh, sh oh, sh don't cut. <laughs> <laughs>